We like to order our lives, meaning we like to put everything in the right box and make sure it all kinds of fits together. We like to know what we're doing and when we're going to do it. We like to know what we're going to eat and when we're going to eat it. When we come to church, we like to sit in the same place every Sunday. And if somebody else is sitting there, it discombobulates us a little bit. What are they doing in my seat? Order gives us a sense of predictability, and with it comes control. And we like to feel like we're in control of everything that happens in our lives because we like to order them. <coughs> the problem is we can't control everything despite our best efforts, despite our supreme confidence in the power of the human will, despite our calendars, reminders, agendas, plans, and goals, there are times when everything does not fit in to the right box and chaos disrupts our ordered lives. The job comes to an end. An important relationship changes. The market suffers a significant loss. You get an uncomfortable diagnosis. Your candidate doesn't win the election. Someone very close to you dies. This is how chaos creeps in. Even though we wish it were not so, our lives are a combination of order and chaos. And so was the first Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the start of Holy Week, the last week of Jesus' life. As Jesus enters Jerusalem, he triggers a sequence of events that will take place over the next seven days, culminating in his death on the cross on Friday and then his resurrection on Easter Sunday. Palm Sunday today is a striking combination of order and chaos. And in the midst of it all, Jesus shows people like you and me how to make the chaos holy. There is order in Palm Sunday. Jesus has looked forward to this day for a long time. About midway through his ministry, Jesus began to shift the focus. Jesus was from Galilee. Galilee is a benign area of rolling hills, grazing flocks, fishing villages with, uh, on the shores of a large freshwater lake called the Sea of Galilee, probably golf courses there now. Jesus is from Galilee, but about midway through, he shifts his attention away from Galilee to Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem. He tells his disciples, I'm going to Jerusalem, and they're not happy about it. Jerusalem is the big city. It's the heart of the nation. It's the center of culture. In Jerusalem, the temple is there. And so there's a big religious presence. And also, Roman authority is there. They don't like the big city. Bad things can happen in the big city. You can get robbed, accosted, made your parking ticket, arrested. Don't go to Jerusalem, Jesus, they tell him. But Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem. And there he goes. He comes to Jerusalem at the most volatile, dangerous time possible. It's the time of the Passover. The city is full of Jewish pilgrims. They have come to celebrate the liberation of their people from slavery in Egypt centuries before. They are full of patriotic and patriotic hopes and the liberation from their current oppressor, the Romans. It's like Jerusalem is a fuse of uh, a stick of dynamite 
with a fuse about to be lit. There's Roman soldiers on every corner. And Jesus picks this time to arrive in Jerusalem. He carefully constructs his entrance into the city. As Jesus and his disciples approach the city, Jesus pulls two of the disciples aside and says, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Clearly, Jesus has made arrangements for this colt. He knows where the colt is. He knows it's never been written. He's even worked out a code word for the owner to release the colt. If anyone asks you when you're untying the colt, just say the Lord needs it. And they'll give it to you. Jesus is bringing order to this first Palm Sunday. He's crafting this event. He's intentional about the details of this event because Jesus wants to fulfill the ancient Hebrew prophecy that says that the Messiah, the new king, will come into the city humble and riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus brings order to Palm Sunday. But then there's the chaos. A multitude of Jesus' followers in Jerusalem recognize immediately what Jesus is claiming. And they believe that the moment of their redemption has arrived, the moment of their salvation, the moment of their freedom from the yoke of oppression of the Romans, their King, the Messiah, has come. And so, following the ancient greeting, they tear branches from trees and spread their cloaks in the road and welcome him as they had welcomed military generals before with patriotic slogans, Hosanna! And patriotic songs, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. They knew the songs. They knew the slogans. His generals had come before. And they thought Jesus was like that. It was an impromptu demonstration, an unplanned procession, a spontaneous parade. And the authorities are caught off guard. The religious authorities tell Jesus, hey, teacher, order your disciples to shut up. And Jesus says, these stones would shout out if everyone was silent. And then there's the Romans. They have no patience for such public upheaval. They see the arrival of a new hero as a challenge to their authority. It's a wonder that Jesus wasn't arrested on the spot and hauled away right then. There's order to Palm Sunday, but there's also chaos. This is a day of swirling emotions. It is a day of triumph as Jesus enacts this ancient prophecy and boldly claims, I am the one for whom the people have been waiting. But Jesus will not be the Messiah as they expect. He did not take a poll to see what kind of leader they wanted. And he was not the kind of leader that would fulfill their expectations because he was not coming to launch a military revolt. He was not coming to engage in conflict with the authorities. He was coming in a different way. And so the crowd was fickle, as crowds almost always are. One day they're yelling, Hosanna, blessed are you. And then, less than a week later, crucify this guy. Crucify him. He didn't have to come to Jerusalem. His disciples tried to tell him, don't go there. 
but he set his face to Jerusalem. He went on ahead up to Jerusalem. He didn't seek to avoid the chaos. Instead, he heads right into the middle of it. And that's how he makes it holy. What really speaks to me about Palm Sunday is this part of Jesus, this aspect of Jesus, his courage, his determination, his endurance that are all just evidence of his faith and trust in God. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem is one of the defining moments of his life. This is one of the days when he says yes to God, your will be done. This is one of the days when he says yes to God, no matter what the cost. This is one of the days he says yes to God, even though there's an enormous sacrifice ahead of him. This is one of the days he says yes to God at the expense of his own comfort, at the expense of his own life. Jesus makes the chaos holy because of his trust and faith in God. And that's the takeaway. Our lives are and will be a combination of order and chaos. We work so hard to maintain the order, but the fact is we're not going to succeed. Chaos will come to us personally. We will suffer tragedy. We will suffer misfortune. We will suffer loss. Chaos will come to us collectively because the world is simply changing so fast and things are so different than they used to be that it's harder and harder to make our way in it. But Palm Sunday calls you and me not to just avoid it, not to just try to stay away from it, not for us to just sit on the couch and not be bothered by it. Palm Sunday calls you and me to be less con in control of our lives and more trusting in God who has a larger plan. More trusting in God who has something bigger going on. More trusting in God who's calling you into something more. If you're like me, you probably have something that's swirling around your head, that's coming up, and you're concerned. Maybe about you, maybe about one of your family members, maybe about a friend, maybe about something that's happening in the world. And it's gonna be hard, and it's gonna be difficult. Somebody's listening. <laughs> and it's gonna seem chaotic, you know? It's going to be something, it is something that we wouldn't naturally go to and we, we would rather not have to do it or face it or have to deal with it. And we've tried to palm it off. And maybe we've even tried to palm it off on God. And it's not working. So here's the thing. God has given you and me deep within us this faith. And once we are more aware of it, we can let it bubble up and it can become courage and determination 
and endurance. And you have it. So we can head straight into the chaos. And it can become holy. A defining moment in our lives. When we realize we are not our own. But we belong to God.